What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I will be reviewing a beer from Brasserie de Chouf in there out of Chouf, Belgium, and this is their La Chouf. So they're calling this one an ale brewed with a coriander, and the base of this beer is technically a Belgian strong blonde slash gold nail. It comes in at 8% alcohol by volume, 20 IBUs, and at the time of review, I don't know exactly how old this bottle is, but it does have a best before date of November of 2023. We're about 10 months away from the month of November 2023, so we should be fine in a style like this could even age, so no worries with the freshness. Now, one of my uh, New Year's resolutions when it comes to the channel was to review uh, more imported beers from Belgium, Germany, and uh, England, and even other imported beers, but I just wanna kinda, at the very least, review like one beer per week that is imported. So when I was in my local Wegmans grocery store, I saw the Discovery like winter mix pack from uh, La Chouf, and I grabbed it. It came with La Chouf, um, Mix Chouf, uh, Hublan Chouf, and Ni Chouf. Um, so you have this, which is the blonde, then you have Mix Chouf, which is the brown, then you have the Hublan Chouf, which is a Belgian IPA, and then the Niche Chouf, which is their winter ale. So we're going to start with the classic La Chouf. I've had this beer uh, a couple times before, but it's been a very long time. I kind of cut my teeth with like German and Belgian beers. Now I will say this, full disclosure, keeping it 100 with you guys, when it comes to Belgian beers, I am a huge fan of the darker beer. So your Belgian quads and your strong dark ales and also like Belgian doubles. When it comes to the Belgian strong uh, blonde slash golden ales or uh, Belgian trapels or Belgian IPAs or Belgian pals, there are some that I really enjoy, but for the most part, they're just not my cup of tea. But I've always enjoyed this one. This is one of the few that I enjoy. Uh, Veshmal's uh, Trapel is another one that I enjoy. Got a little bit of a riser here. Now, the cool thing about uh, Le Chouf and the you know mixed pack or whatever you want to call it is the simple fact that you get a glass with it. And that's fantastic. It says, find Marcel. And uh, as you can see, he's all over it. So anyway, they have different um, you know names for the gnomes and whatnot. Anyway, let's give it a pour here and see what we got. This is going to be you know, pretty carbonated like a Belgian should be. I'm going to leave the goodies to the end there and pour them in and see if it changes at all. But we will pour something like this. That is the vast majority. we got like an ounce or two. And we'll try to figure it out um, at the end there. So the one thing about this glass, though, is because you have the fine mar the, all the Marcells uh, and the different gnomes is you can't really see the color that well. But I will say that has that, you know, golden kind of orange color to it like it should. Um, it looks like a Belgian, you know, strong uh, blonde ale or gold nail. Uh, very carbonated. This, I don't know if this has the etching to promote the carbonation. I poured it a little bit aggressively, so we got about a three finger of this off-white, almost eggshell, almost cream-colored head. Uh, very, uh, like, moderate-sized bubbles, so it's not they're not super compact, but it's also not, like, crazy soap sudsy. As you can see, it's not really going anywhere. Like, I can move this around, and it's just kind of staying there like whipped cream. Pretty fantastic-looking beer, honestly. Um, you know? decent haze to it kind of what you expect from the style let's get a nose yeah so that belgian yeast is kind of doing what it what it should so this is actually brewed with coriander i think technically even though i said the base was a belgian a strong blonde slash gold nail i think they kind of start with a belgian trapel um and the fact that i can say belgian it's when you say belgian strong gold nail or trapel I mean, when you say Trapel, it's, it's basically, you know it's a Belgian, right? But this is authentic because it's from Belgium. Uh, anyway, I think they start with the Trapel, uh, and then they add the coriander, so they can't technically call it a Trapel anymore. I think it has to be like a Belgian strong gold nail or blonde ale. But anyway, yeah, I'm getting a lot of like zesty, spicy kind of hop slash yeasty kind of characters. The coriander is there. Like a lot of times you'll get the phenolic kind of yeast character that will produce the coriander or like a clove. But I'm just getting more coriander on top of that. But then I'm getting nice citrus. Like there's a lemony, orange kind of just feel to it. There's red apple. There's pear. Lighter fruits for sure. Maybe a touch of like a honey drizzle. Yeah, it's floral. A little bit of spicy. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of strange because I don't know necessarily if the spicy kind of character is coming straight from the yeast, if it's coming from the coriander, or if it's coming from like the hops. It's kind of just like an all melding together, you know? There's a nice like kind of multi sensation. 
yeah, I mean, it overall, it smells kind of like a Belgian strong gold nail or like a Belgian Chappelle, although a little bit heavier maybe on the coriander. But I've always enjoyed this one, like I said, to some degree. So it smells pretty good. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Mm. So one thing I wasn't getting in the nose, that this first thing that hits me, bubble gum. Like a juicy fruit yeast ester. And it's very substantial. It's definitely bubble gum. Maybe a touch of banana, but more bubble gum than anything. Buying this is like higher side of medium, lower side of full. Pretty substantial for 8%, which is really nice because it is 8%. So it's nice to kind of tell from the body standpoint it's a little bit bigger. The mouthfeel has a nice smooth kind of character to it, but there's a lot of carbonation here, which is typical for the style. It's very, it's like higher side of moderately carbonated. All that carbonation dances on the tongue, but it's not over the top. It's, it's appropriate for the style. So I enjoy that. The, the taste, I'm, I, I almost kind of like just started flipping out there because I, I didn't know what I was going to say, but when I really wanted to say it, and I was, I was going to go into a whole nother like thought process and I just kind of got stumped there by my own brain. But what I was going to say is that the taste, that bubblegum thing is definitely prominent and I wasn't getting the nose, but on the palate, this is very complex just like the nose was in a, with that addition of bubblegum. So right at the forefront, it has that sweeter, like multi-grainy sensation, almost a wheat kind of component to it. As it passes through, the fruitiness kicks in. There's a sweeter, like red apple, uh, maybe a touch of like a, a white pear. There's like all that's like honey drizzled. And then as it passes through, the bubblegum hits. And the bubblegum, again, Picture uh, Wrigley's Juicy Fruit. That's kind of what I'm getting to a T here in the taste. It's straight on bubblegum flavor. And it's really nice. It's, I like, I mean, you know, the OG flavor of bubblegum, whether it's Hubba Bubba or, or, or Juicy Fruit or whatever, like I just like the regular bubblegum flavor. It's delicious. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. But right after that bubblegum hits, it turns into this nice coriander-esque kind of spiced kind of component, but it's mixing in with these floral tones and a little bit of like an earthiness. Yeah, it, it kind of, it, it's kind of cool. And I wouldn't say it's not expected because it is, but the transition from that bubblegum yeast ester into like the finale coriander with the real coriander and then like a little bit of hop character, really cool transition. I dig it. Finishes semi to full on dry. There isn't a ton of bitterness here. This is like very mildly bitter. With a lot of Belgian beers, you'll you you won't experience a ton of bitterness. That's the one thing is like people are like, oh, I hate beer because it's bitter. Well, the reason why a lot of people get into Belgian beers, I feel, or even like some German styles, is like there isn't a substantial bitterness to a lot of them. Now they do have hops to balance everything out and make sure it's not overly sweet, and whatnot. But like there are, are, it's very rare for me to drink like a classic Belgian beer and just be like, oh, that's way too bitter. Like it just doesn't happen. Usually it balances it out. Maybe you can taste a little bit of it, but like something like this, very mildly bitter. It's more dry than bitter. And I think that's why these are very approachable to people trying to get into craft beer. Cause I think this is, this is something different than like you're just old school, like American IPA where like, you know, you're, you're the bitterness smacks you in the face. It's really good. I could drink on this, you know, all day long. Is it amazing to my palate? It is not. Can I see somebody drinking this and just loving it? Yes, I can. And that goes for all Belgian beers. Like there are so many like classic, uh, you know, lighter Belgian beers that aren't like strong darks or quads that are world class that I don't think they're world class to my palate, but I get why they're world class because if you like that style, I can understand you love it. Do I think this is world class for a, a Belgian strong blonde gold nail? No. Do I think there's some people out there that might think that? Yes. Are either of us wrong? No. So this is pretty good. Let me pour in the rest of the beer, like the goodies. See if like all the goodies at the bottom add anything. More often than not, all they do is kind of bump up the body. Maybe the intensity a lot of times to like that coriander, like the phenolic or estery kind of yeast component. Yeah, <laughs> when I took that sip, more concentrated coriander. I don't think I like that as much, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about it. 8%. Can I tell it's 8%? Yeah, there's a warming in the chest. No sure to see how to palate, but definitely a warming. I can tell it's 8%. So La Chouf from Brasserie de Chouf. Um, 
yeah, this is just a damn, damn good beer. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and lose my shit over it because I just, I, I'm honest with you. But this is a real good beer. And if you like this style, I could see you really digging this one. For me, I think I'm going to enjoy probably the McShoof a little bit more, probably the Nishoof. Uh, I don't know about the Ublan Shoof because Belgian IPA is hit or miss for me. But this beer right here, and it says uh, 40 years in uh, 2022. So that in, in 1982, they I guess they opened up the brewery. So anyway, Le Shoof, um Straight four out of five. I think that's where it lands for me. It's a pretty good uh, Belgian gold nail artisanal, as they say on the back there. I don't know if you'll see that. It says artisanal gold nail. But this beer itself is just a, a really solid, well-made beer within style. And I, I like that little pop of coriander. Maybe that's why I like this a little bit more than like a Belgian gold nail or a Belgian, um, you know, a blonde ale. I think it just, I, I do like coriander. I don't think it's over the top here. When it poured in the goodies, maybe so, but Anyway, price and availability, I get this in the Discovery Pack with the glass and four beers, it was $18. Uh, but I think a four pack of this in my neck of the woods is like 12 to 13 bucks, so that's a fine price. These are 11.2 fluid ounce bottles, which is uh, 330 milliliters, so a little bit smaller, but typical of the imported beers. And uh, availability, you should be able to get Lachouf in your area, especially if you're in the US. Just go to your imported uh, beer section of your local grocery store or bottle shop or beer store, and you should be able to find this. I don't know if you'll be able to get the Discovery Pack, but you should be able to get Lachouf at the very least. So anyway, if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this one. I'm probably going to review the other three within the pack over the course of January, one per week. And like I said, throughout 2023, I'm going to try to do my best to each week review at least one imported beer. And you know, if, if I can review somewhere between 50 to 75 imported beers in 2023, I will be doing it right because last year I did not. Anyway, to the next one. Cheers.